All right, for more sports news, here's Barom Tony Uranta. Thank you, Joma. Welcome to Sports News. And just before we head on to the 2018 FIFA World Cup, the 2018 Special Olympics Nigeria National Games has ended in Lagos. The three-day games were used as a selection process for the athletes that will represent Nigeria at the Special Olympics World Summer Games in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates in 2019. It's been three days of competitions and various events for a chance to fly the country's flag at the 2019 Special Olympics World Games in Abu Dhabi. It's no surprise to see board members of Special Olympic Nigeria, friends and family of the athletes come together to draw the curtain on what has been an exciting moment for the special athletes. because we're always celebrating uh, inclusion and recognizing that our societies are strong when we are diverse and when we are inclusive. And I'm so inspired by you. That's what I want these athletes to know. Anytime we have national games, especially one leading to the World Games, everybody puts in all their best. So it's always very exciting and very, it's very exciting. You know, so it's been great three days and we really enjoyed it. And the athletes are great. They really want to go. High point of the closing ceremony was the selection of the special athletes that will compete in track and field events in Abu Dhabi from the pool of gold medalists that emerged from the national games. In which the participants of the World Games are selected in every country is by a ballot system. That is, all the athletes that won in all the different categories, their names have been put, male and female, into these two transparent glass bowls. With the national games done and dusted, the task ahead for the special athletes is to surpass their 2015 71 medals performance at the World Summer Games held in Los Angeles. And 24 hours after being sensationally sacked from Spain's national squad, a tear for Julian Lopetegu had been unveiled as Real Madrid's new coach. Lopetegu returned to Madrid today after being fired from the national team two days before their opening World Cup match. The 51-year-old agreed a three-year deal to replace Zinedine Zidane as coach of the European champions following the Frenchman's surprise exit after a third successive Champions League triumph. At the ceremony, Real Madrid president Florentino Perez accused the Spanish Football Federation of taking a absurd reaction in sacking their manager on the eve of the World Cup. Tennis now, and Australian Nick Kriegers is through to the quarterfinals of the Stuttgart Cup in Germany. The number four seed defeated Maximilian Marat Matera of Germany 6-4, 4-6-6-3. Kriegers took the opening set when he broke. Matera served in the 10th game. The German came back in the second set with a break of serve in the ninth game before holding serve to take the next set before the Australian clinched the match after a hundred minutes of play. And that's it on Sports News for tonight as we join the Russian team in celebrating their victory at the World Cup. I'm Baron Tony Ranta and Ijama will be back to the back. Thanks, Barron. New York is suing the Trump Foundation, Donald Trump and his children, for alleged extensive and persistent law-breaking. New York Attorney General Barbara Underwood said the charitable foundation had engaged in a lawful political coordination designed to influence the 2016 presidential election. Underwood said in a statement that Trump illegally instructed his foundation to provide support to his presidential campaign by using the foundation's name and funds it raised to promote the campaign. The president has hit back, blaming sleazy New York Democrats, that's in quote, of being behind the suit, and he promised not to settle the case. 
Spain's new interior minister, Fernando Grande Marasca, has promised to do everything possible to remove the anti-migrant razor wire fences that separate Morocco from the Spanish territories. Injuries are common when jumpers try to scale the six-meter fences, which are often toppled by barbed wire or even coils of razor blades. The Spanish Red Cross said 25 migrants have been treated for barbed wire cuts uh, already this year, with 10 needing hospital treatment. Malaska says the goal should be to deter would-be migrants before they reach the perimeter. And sons of the man stabbed to death in a mosque in South Africa have described how they tried to stop the attacker and save their father. 72-year-old Ismail Bassa was reportedly killed as he slept in the mosque north of Cape Town when an unknown man launched a deadly assault early this morning. His widow Zainab and the rest of the family were at home when someone began banging on the front door at 2.30 a.m. local time. Her sons, 30-year-old Suad and 24-year-old Faisal, immediately rushed to the mosque with some heavy equipment like sticks and tried to keep the man in the mosque. The man reportedly of Somali origin was eventually shot dead by officers who've launched an investigation. And the main news again. The 2018 FIFA World Cup today kicked off in Russia with 32 nations and more than 80,000 soccer fans attending the opening session of the world's biggest football event. Also today, President Muhammad Buhari asked Muslims to let the teaching of Islam reflect in their conduct as they prepare to end the holy month of Ramadan. And fresh trouble broke out for America's President Donald Trump today as New York Attorney General accuses Trump his children and the foundation of alleged extensive law-breaking. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Ijoma Winyato. Good night.